Hey, everybody, this is Sheets. And after a little bit of a hiatus, we are going to be resuming the MMA contrarian betting breakdown videos. Um, we had a week off and I was in Vegas the week before and took a week off the week before that. So we want to get back into this probably by popular demand. I really didn't think that anybody was watching these um, because it's not exactly content about who to bet. I mean, it is, but it's more content about how to think about markets and how to think about situations where you have to, you know, figure out <laughs> whether a line is efficient or not and, and how to bet uh, into a market like that. Um, so I wasn't even aware that people were getting so much out of this and several people came into me and say, Hey, what happened to the contrarian betting breakdowns? So I am going to continue doing them. So again, it is not like your normal UFC content. Um, we are going to go over the fights and who I'm going to be betting. Okay. In, in the most direct way, but the idea behind this type of, uh, review is to think about things in a contrarian way and to teach you how to be suspicious of lines that seem too good to be true or narratives that seem too good to be true. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I mean, uh, in addition to my DFS and poker background, I, I also have uh, run hedge fund for, you know, what, 20 years? Uh, boy, oh boy, it's been that long. And to be able to, uh, to, be able to do that it requires you to be able to assess the psychology of markets and the psychology of stocks and the psychology of positions and to be able to figure out what of a price is is driven by by good storytelling and and attempt to fade that type of easy storytelling. Um, to again, to analogize this to the stock market, I always would say that if the story of a stock is is so easy to tell that my five year old could tell it to me, and be excited about it, it's probably a short, you know, um, and, and likewise, the opposite. So wh why do I choose UFC to illustrate this point? Why don't I look at the other sports betting markets? Well, because the UFC is a little bit different, or an MMA is a little bit different. When, when, when content providers and when sharps and when, when handicappers and touts or whatever analyze these fights, they, 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 not only come to a sort of a consensus on who they like, but but they also come to a very strong consensus of how a fight is going to go. And uh, if if at one extreme, there are some fights where everybody agrees that something is going to happen in a certain way. And more likely, though, the crowd will at least come to a consensus in a binary fashion, like either A wins this way or B wins that way. And, and whether that is true or not, whether it's more likely than not that those results happen. Because of the way groupthink works and everybody kind of piles on each other's thoughts and takes, those most likely outcomes tend to be extremely overvalued. And, and it makes sense, right? If everybody's on, you know, believes the same thing, you know, then they're all going to pile into the same thing and they, you know, the sports books are not dummies, right? They're going to move the lines. So, so, you um uh what you want to do in UFC is realize that it's a it's it's a betting market between two fighters that are going after each other with a lot of chaos and to ignore the, the chaos of that by coming up with these very binary outcomes is extraordinarily uh dangerous so what we like to do is 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 go over the common narrative, go over what people are saying about this fight, and then essentially fade that. The idea being is that if we can find the most popular thing that's a fade, then almost everything else is going to be plus EV. Now, again, there's VIG and there's all that kind of stuff, so it's not exactly true, but that's the way I want you to start thinking about markets like this, You know, whether it be MMA, whether it be football, whether it be you know the stock market, anything where there's a transaction cost or a VIG, and you have to overcome that in some way. Um, I, I'm not good enough, and very few are, at actually being better than the line. You know, if, if like, I don't know, Andre Petrovsky is minus 305 plus 245. Very few people can know whether that's a bad line or not. That's very, very difficult, especially when you have a 60 cent VIG in there. And to make that up is almost impossible. Almost impossible, I think. Um, but 
what you can do, and this is, again, translates to other disciplines, so it's more useful, I think, in the long run. You can think about where the narrative is on a fight and know what you're supposed to fade. So uh, one, one thing, again, before we get into this, one thing that we do that is just very different than regular sports betting is we wait till as long as possible to make our bets. And that's that's usually not the right idea. Usually the, the most sharp sports bettors, you know, pick these lines up early because they know which way they're going to move. That's not what we're trying to do here. I want to wait as long as possible so that I can have a better idea of where all the consensus is. Okay. Um, we're not beating the line. What we're doing is accepting that the line is what it is and figuring out what part of that line is being driven by narrative and, and, and group speak as opposed to actual, you know, chances of happening. Um, so let's, uh, let's go over the rules here. Uh, we, are going to, and this is this is what we do every every single card. We are going to bet one uh, thing on every single fight, and uh, obviously that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Second of all, we are going to be betting one unit on every fight, and uh, that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is going to be exactly one hundred eighty dollars, ten times high. Good luck. And again, I always feel is that if if someone is going to Recom I say recommend bets. If they are going to talk about bets they want to make and they say that they're going to make them, I don't know. I just kind of think it's healthy to actually say the amount that they're betting. I, you know, I know, I know units are different for each pe each person and whatever, but I don't know. I, I always found it a little more transparent. And uh, when I was listening to people, so I figured I would do that myself. So the other thing, which is always fun, is we are going to presume that the first what eleven fights, twelve fights, however many there are here. Um, we are going to lose and we will need to get all of our money back in the last fight. So in the main event, we always bet something that is whatever odds it is, it's going to be enough to get all of our money back. And that's always kind of a fun sweat. Um, so again, uh, I hope you understand the purpose of this video. I hope you understand what I'm trying to accomplish and then kind of let's get into it. Uh, and as we see, you know, there's going to be some fights where there's less of a contrarian take, but uh, I'll try to emphasize that. As they go, I am still going to bet the same amount in each one. All right, so let's just get started. Uh, we have a rebooked fight, uh, Ramaska versus Nathan Fletcher. And, you know, the problem with this one, well, the good thing about this one, I guess, is this was analyzed pretty heavily because it was going to be fought two weeks ago. And it got canceled due to uh, Fletcher uh, having an illness or something like that. And uh, they just rebooked it. The problem was, was that it was kind of a late addition to the card and it was, these guys were fighting this, the tough series or whatever it was. And so nobody really knew too much about them. So what they did was they kind of settled on this idea that it was going to be a banger and that Fletcher was going to be, you know, uh, uh, was going to be going for wrestling and things like that. So this one is behaving sort of efficiently. You know, you, you have people on both sides of this, um, and uh, this is probably one of the worst fights to try to be contrarian because you can find people that have come up with every every which way. So what we're going to do with this particular one is 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 I don't know. It's do something which which ha we've had a lot of luck doing is when you have one fighter who is uh, more prone to get the takedowns, and that would be Fletcher. What we do is we accept that the fight could end up getting to the ground, and we what we do is we bit the other fighter to win by sub, okay? Because once the fight gets to the ground, anything is possible. And so uh, I, uh, we're going to take a shot here. Very, very big long shot, I presume, yeah. So Ramaska by sub plus the 180. And that is pretty goddamn contrarian. I don't know if anybody's actually doing that. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's do that one. Very, very, you know, listen, real stab in the dark here. But there's no real consensus on either side. So uh, yeah, as opposed to this fight, Okay, so this one, I wasn't sure what I was going to do because, you know, look, everybody kind of knows how this fight's going to go. Like Petrosky is going to get his, you know, try to get his takedowns and put up a pretty boring fight. Uh, maybe he'll wear him down and get a, and get a, you know, get a finish or something like that. But, uh, you know, he, he, Petrosky also could have cardio issues, maybe. So, uh, and nobody really wanted any part of this. And then what happened 
was that yesterday Dylan Budka came on the uh, the scales and he almost died. I mean, he he almost fell off the scales, or maybe he did, to the point where they really didn't think that this fight was going to go off. Um, so you know, and they still think maybe Budka has to drop out because he just looks so terrible. So I would like to say that there is nobody in their right mind, if this fight does in fact go off, that is going to take Dylan Butka. So we are going to do it. <laughs> uh, Dylan Butka, plus the terrible look on the scales, plus the, you know, I don't know, barely makes it to the ring maybe, or the octagon. We're going to try it plus the 245. Um, okay. Jacqueline Emery versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Um, so Vanessa Demopoulos is kind of known for, for getting kind of really uh, sketchy decisions going her way. And I've heard a lot about that this week, that for whatever reason, the judges favor her. So what that means is that we really can't bet Demopoulos by decision because that's kind of baked into the narrative uh, somewhat. And uh, in addition to that, okay, um, you have on the other side, you have them saying that an Amarim is going to probably dominate uh, Demopoulos. So, you know, what? how do we reconcile this? Well, I think there are two things that we can do here. Number one is we could just play Amarim by decision. You know, with all this talk about how it's going to be tough to get a decision over at Demopoulos, uh, uh, that is um, that is certainly uh, that's certainly something people are afraid of. So Amarim by decision might be actually a pretty good look here. Now it is only minus one hundred five, but still, I mean, it is what it is. Amarim by submission seems to be the most logical thing to do. I mean, like she gets a lots of wins by you know by submission. OK, um, there are two other things that you can do here. Number one is is the same concept we talked I talked about earlier, that whenever you have one fighter that's going to be going for takedowns, if the other fighter has any submission skills at all, maybe Demopolis by um, maybe that fighter can win by sub. So you can look at Demopolis by sub as plus fourteen hundred. So that is a really, really huge price. The other thing, so that's one thing you could do. Second thing I said was Amram by decision. And the third thing is perhaps Amram by KO. Okay. Because one thing that you could do if you get the, you know, get the takedowns is get you know, get ground and pound. And the other thing that I've heard all week is how tough Demopolis is. So uh Anything that fades the Demopolis is tough thing works too. So I think that Amarim by KO plus 900 is worth a look or Demopolis by sub at 1400. So let, let's, um let's go into the, uh, into the fight histories and let's just make sure that both these fighters actually at least have that in their, in their arsenal somehow. As a matter of fact, before I forget, ugh, I probably shouldn't do this, but. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that uh, my my uh, first guy, my my Ramaska, did at least have a sub in there, and he's got a he's got a few of them. So I actually am kind of liking that one. Um, so let's take a look at these at these girls. Let's see. Dem I'm pretty sure Demopolis. No, she does not. Yeah, she does have one sub over Gomez Suarez, but only the one. Eh, she's got a couple, so that's possible. And let's look at Amarim. Amrim's got KO, KO. So I, I'm, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with the Amarim by KO at plus one eighty. And what we're gonna end up doing, we're gonna end up hitting stake all singles at the end of this. All right. So we're we're well on our way, by the way. If you haven't figured this out yet, of going over over the card. So we better really think about how to get our money back in the main event. All right, so Yisha versus Gabriel Santos. Um, I would have. I was thinking that Santos was going to be overlooked because he lost his last two fights, but uh, unfortunately, he he's suffering from the you know one of one of the one of the one of the angles that we talk about here a lot, and that is the overvalue due to quality losses angle that that fighters get rewarded really really highly for putting up good fights in losses i think overly so so uh 
basically everybody's on Santos this week. I've seen maybe one out of 400,000 people get on Yisha, even plus the 200. So we're, we're going to, we're going to try this. We're going to go Yisha plus the 210. Good, good luck with, you know, all of that. Felipe Dos Santos versus uh, Andre Lima. Uh, this is unfortunately, this is another angle that we have to uh, respect. And that is the shoot a box fade. Okay, uh, all these fighters that are from the shoot a box gym, they look cool, they act cool, they kind of fight cool, and people just love to say shoot a box. So essentially, fading shoot a box probably has some inherent good value in there. Um, and until actually until last night, where I actually there was one guy I follow who's super duper sharp, really really like Lima. Everybody else was kind of on the Santos kind of popular underdog thing. So we are going to go ahead and take Lima. Um, and the other thing that I, I noticed was that, you know, DeSantos is tough. He's, he's, he's got that dog in him or whatever it is. So, you know, we are going to go ahead and take Lima inside the distance. Um, so let's just take a look at that. Lima against the guy with that dog in him, uh, either by KO or sub. Plus three three plus three thirty for one eighty. Okay. Oh, we are really gonna lose them all here. Hey, thanks a lot, all you guys, for making me go and do this again. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna torch like twenty one hundred sixty dollars or something like that. But listen, it's it's all it's all in the name of education, so it's good. Uh, Isaac Delgarian versus Brandon Marat. Um, it, it's like a minus four thousand favorite. I probably should just take Marat plus the freaking 1200, but th that, that, that line is just so ridiculous. Like minus 24 to plus 12. There's just no way there's any value there at all. So we're just going to have to kind of invent something. I suppose there, there's no contrarian way to play. I guess, you know what? I guess what people are not doing is Dolgarian by decision. I mean, if you could somehow get away with this, You know, you. I mean, it's twelve hundred. I mean, is is it possible he's under orders to just kind of keep this thing going, or is that just really legitimately tossing one eighty in the trash can? Well, let's let's see something. May, maybe just maybe the dude can can survive to like round two or something like that. Let, let, let's look at some of these others. So, round props. Right, Dolgari round two plus three fifty. So all the guys got to do is survive round one and then get so, then get beat. So, okay, we'll, we'll try it. We used to do this a lot with these big favorites. Just just go for the round two. So that's fine. Dolgarian round two plus 350 for 180. All right. Um, Rong Zhu versus Chris Padilla. Boy, I really thought, I, I was I'm surprised with the way this kind of played out. Actually, I really shouldn't be. So, Padilla, um, so Rangju is is a young guy who has nothing but but, but great things. He's, he's got lots of takedowns. He's very, you know, he's an up and coming. Well, not up and coming. He's, he's like twenty two years old or twenty four years old, and he's had like forty fights. He's one of those, you know, uh, uh, Asian fighters that that goes down that road of of starting fighting when they're two years old. You know, um, but then Padilla. We have this kind of MMA math thing, which is getting him some love here, that he actually just, well, not really MMA math, but he just took care of, of James Lontop like pretty quickly. And Lontop put on a pretty good performance two weeks ago. So Padilla is actually getting a decent amount of love here. So we're actually going to be sort of contrarian and take the wrong Zhu side. Um, now, he is probably going to be going for the takedown. So what you could do, ugh, yeah, maybe we should. If we're going to really keep it real, as the kids say, or maybe the kids don't say that way, you play like Padilla by sub, you know, because Rangju, again, is going to be going for those takedowns. And whenever you have these scrambles, if the other guy has any kinds of subs in him at all, it's probably a good idea. I'm afraid to look because if he does have any subs here, I'm just going to kind of have to do it. Let's see. Padilla. Let's see if he's got any subs on his record. Uh, oh, his last one. Sub, rear naked choke. And then a couple of more here. Yeah, we're doing it. Um, Padilla by sub plus five hundred. It's actually even not that 
that long. But okay. Padilla by sub, plus 180. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate this. Okay, so I I am legit shocked by this line. Okay, and when it came out, I'm like, it's going to move or whatever it is. So you have <laughs> Trevor Peak and Yanel Ashmus. I thought that this was going to be, you know, minus 500 inside the distance, you know, for uh, for this fight, over under one and a half rounds, because these guys just go go after each other, you know? But I guess what I've been hearing this week is is, is kind of like the Trevor Peak durability thing, you know, like that Trevor Peak just can't get knocked out. And so if he can't get knocked out, then uh it's then the whole inside the distance thing's on him. And he actually has only finished one guy. Um, I, I will say this, like they they really want to give me under two and a half rounds at plus one twenty four. I'm again, this is for another, another video. Okay. Because this is like a lock. <laughs> I don't know. I think what the hell do I know? Um, so I, I guess since it looks so brutal that we should probably just bet the fight to go to this decision. I, I don't, I don't even understand what's supposed to happen here. So let's just take a look. Fight props. Fight goes the distance, and you got to lay 135? All right, this is atrocious. This is nobody. Who's betting this? I guess we are. I, I don't know. All right, uh, moving on. How is that fight going the distance? Everyone, uh, okay. Anyway, that's that's another video. But we're, we're all, I, this can't be the right side. So that's why we're going to bet it. Matt Chanel versus Cody Durden. Um, all right, so... Cody Durden steps in at short notice to fight Matt Schnell. And he walks right in as a huge favorite. Again, the problem here is that his style, you know, it's very wrestling based. And, you know, if you come in on short notice, um, you know, you, you, you it's kind of tough to wrestle for five minutes. It's not like Schnell is legitimately the worst, but Schnell has this, 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 this bad chin sort of. So it's possible I mean, it's just possible that Durden doesn't even go for the takedowns and he just kind of goes for the knockout. So, I mean, what is Durden by knockout? I, I can't, it's just so not his style, but it's only plus 130. Wait a minute. Durden by sub is plus 700 in this spot. Ugh, see, this is, this is why I don't bet. This is why I just don't bet straight because this is this is like a lock, isn't it? Or maybe he just doesn't finish anybody, but he's going to get a million takedowns, isn't he? At least that's what he could do. He has no subs. Is that what we're saying here? Yeah, I, I guess not. How does this guy have no subs since like 2019? I mean, back. I guess he used to. I, I I don't know. It's gonna be sub city. Are we gonna are we gonna do this? Ugh. Fine. Fine. Sucker. I'm gonna go right along with it. See, this is exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to do here. Actually, that's not true. I mean All right, so this is gonna be one of those things. Don't do this. But I'm doing it, and I'm completely going to brag when it comes in. How about that? Pure, true true tout life. I'm literally telling you guys not to do any of this. But I'm going to be doing it, and I'm going to be bragging when it comes in. Well, welcome to welcome to content, I guess. All right. Um, Steve Garcia versus Kyle Nelson. Okay, so we know what we're going to do here. First of all, I was about to say that everybody knows this is going to be a car crash. Like, all the Steve Garcia fights just end up this way. OK, but I have heard that Kyle Nelson uh, has been known to have a better fight IQ and and maybe he could just kind of survive the round one onslaught and then kind of take over late. Um, 
So what you really can't bet here, you know, narrative wise, is anything Garcia rounds one or two, because that's where he finishes all his fights. And certainly nothing Garcia by KO. And you really can't bet Nelson late or by decision either, because that's his method of victory. So what you could do if you want to be contrarian is one of two things. You could either play Nelson inside like the first round and, and win like the battle of the first round knockouts, or you could be a real psycho and play Garcia by decision. Um, let's take a look at some of these. Garcia by decision is plus 900. What's Nelson in round one? Plus 400. Um, I think this is what we're going to try. We're, we're going to try... Boy, should we do this? Let's put it through. Has Garcia ever won a decision? I doubt it, right? Let's just take a look. Just, just to make sure. Uh, Garcia... Has, I don't believe he's ever won a decision. No. No, definitely. Oh, yeah, back in 2018. Five-round decision. And got some decisions back in... Yeah, okay. Decision over Ronnie Lawrence back in 2016. But um, let's see. Recently, what has he done? I mean, just floored him. Second round, second round. Boy, oh, boy. I, I really have a, a... Well, he went to this decision... That's something. Oh, fine. Fine. Garcia by decision for 180. I'm really, yeah, listen, you guys made me come back here. And you guys are all going to cost me 21, whatever. And, and God knows, and if you guys tell me, you're going to lose all this too. But at least you're learning something about how to think about these things. All right. Um, oh, we're just down to two more. Oh, thank God. Natalie Silva versus Jessica Andrade. So Jessica Andrade is probably a pretty popular underdog here. I mean, she's got that big name and she does have some good wins recently over Marina Rodriguez and also the big knockouts over, over Mackenzie Dern. Uh, but Natalie Silva, Natalia Silva just never loses. And, and, and what, what I've been hearing is that Natalia Silvia Silva is basically too quick. Um, so she's going to keep Jessica at bay, and she's probably going to win a decision, maybe get like kind of a late KO. And Andrade, if she if she gets, you know, if she gets her hands going, I think her path to victory is probably more in the KO herself. I just don't think that people believe that in a three-round, like long, drawn-out fight, Jessica Andrade can win a decision. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, Andrade by decision would be where? Uh, plus 600. So let, let us now review like all these atrocious bets that we've made. We're already going to lose 1980, so we got to get it back. So Ramaska is going to win by sub, okay, over a guy who's going to take him down every time. Budka can't even make it off the stairs without collapsing, so we're going to bet him. Amarim, you know, by KO? I mean, she's, if anything, she's going to get the sub. And how is she going to KO Demopolis, who's just undestructible, indestructible? Uh, Santos, the 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 tremendous losses to Onama and the robbery against uh, Laurel Murphy. Uh, Yisa, nobody knows who this is, plus 210. Uh, uh, Felipe de Santos, the shoot-day box fade, uh, plus, the three, plus 330 inside. Tulgaria round two, just kind of a stab in the dark there, so that's going to lose. Padilla by sub over the big wrestling genius. Okay, so plus 500. That's that's a loser. Peak Ashmus. This is like the worst line I think I've ever bet. Okay, this fight to go the distance minus 135. I don't know what we're doing. We're just literally throwing money in the garbage. Uh, oh, well, except odds changes where? I don't even know where it's going to be. But what, we're going to bet all this after. Um, Durden by sub. He hasn't gotten a sub since the Eisenhower administration. And he's got... Bad cardio, not bad cardio, but he's coming on short notice. Uh, Garcia by decision. Garcia wins everything in the first or second round. Why would we do this? Because we just want to lose. Andrade, not as fast, not as technical. If she wins, how is she going to win by a decision? We'll find out. So we have 11 losses, and we got to get something that's 12 to 1 in the main. So what do we have? 
we have Gilbert Burns against Sean Brady. Now, I, I promise you that Gilbert Burns is the popular side here. He is the name, for one thing. People love him as another thing. And then you have this one kind of MMA math matchup between these two, uh, with these two. And you have Gilbert Burns going five rounds with Bilal Muhammad. Um, pretty good fight. I mean, he definitely lost, but, you know, he, he was competitive. And then you have Brady getting just pieced up and destroyed by Muhammad in round two. And people are also um, commenting that Muhammad has no finishes except for Brady. Is it Brady? Um, so the, the popular side is going to be the Burns side. All right, so I don't really think we can bet anything over there. Um, so it's got to be something with Brady. Um, so what do, what do we know here? Uh, the one thing that we are hearing is that it's perhaps Burns has has questionable cardio because he's in his thirties or something. So Brady is more likely to get that you know, decision win or a late, later win. So what you cannot really bet here is, I think, is Brady laid. And I don't think you can bet Brady by decision. I think that the only things you could do here are you can bet Brady early or maybe Burns late, okay? Uh, that's possible. So we have to, unfortunately, back into a 12 to one shot here. So let's just take a look at some of these. So like Brady, like round three, is that early enough? Yeah, I guess that's fine. Like Brady round three plus 1400. I guess that makes sense. What about that method of victory? I mean, I presume that we're going to need, if Brady's going to finish, he's not going to, you're not going to sub him. So, probably going to need some kind of KO here. Let's let's take a look at round particular, you know what I mean, like particular method. Um well, first of all, Brady by KO is plus 300, that's nothing, but but if you could do it in a particular round maybe so here. So you get Brady by KO round 2 is only plus 200. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go Brady round three. Uh, it's early enough to take advantage of that of that narrative that it's probably going to be, you know, that that he's more likely to finish late. But to be realistic, it's uh, to be realistic, we just need something that's 13 to one. And this is the closest thing to being contrarian with something that's got a shot. What about the how about Brady round five? Do that. Uh, we'll 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 go Brady round three plus fourteen hundred for one eighty. So we're going to be betting all these. We're going to do it after we log off because uh, DraftKings hates Zoom and it'll just it'll get mad at me. Hopefully this uh, helped you at least think about the way to approach these types of things. And uh, hey, maybe we get lucky and we and we cash for something. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.